It's absolutely ridiculous. The story makes absolutely no sense. He claims to be laying there face down in the snow with his skis still attached to his boots. Were your skis on or off at the end of the collision, do you know? Absolutely, they were on. If he takes any kind of big fall like that, okay, the actual skis detach like very quickly. And the reason why is so your limbs don't break off. As you can imagine, it can be quite dangerous if you make, you know, if you end up falling and your skis don't give, you know, you can literally snap off your legs. And for him to say, oh, I took this big fall and he went flying, he literally said, I went flying. I got hit in my back so hard and it, I, I'm right at my shoulder blades and it felt like and was perfectly centered and the, the fists and the poles were right there at the bottom of my shoulder blades. Serious, serious smack. Never been hit that hard and I'm flying. I'm absolutely flying. But your skis didn't detach and he's claiming they're, they're still, you know, it doesn't make any sense. The story makes absolutely no sense. And what Mr. Sanderson admitted was that he admitted saying sorry after the accident. And I got to placate this guy. I remember saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Usually the person who uh, runs into the other person is the first to apologize. It's just ridiculous. And I think what Gwenna said was that he initially said, well, you skied into me. Why did you do that? Yes. And he said, I think you skied into me. Yes. And that's when you were furious and said, you skied directly into my effing back. At the top of your lungs. Yes, I did. Which is quite interesting. It would be like, well, why would he think that she skied into him? And I think kind of the reason is, is that she was, I think, actually on the side of the mountain, kind of skiing her way. But when he was coming in from the other side, her traverse was kind of going in the direction that he was coming kind of thing. You know, still he was further up on the mountain than she was, but he was making these wide radius turns. So he was taking up the entire mountain, which is not something I really recommend anyone to do unless you are completely alone on the mountain and you just want to goof off. You know, you don't take these big radius turns, you know, because when you do that, of course, as you can imagine, you're taking up the entire ski slope and you're bound to hit somebody. But the thing is, as someone who's quite experienced now and, you know, was inexperienced 10 years ago or whatever, and I can remember back to being very inexperienced, inexperienced people typically take very wide turns, very high radius turns down the mountain. It's very typical of someone who's inexperienced or scared or maybe is losing some of, you know, their understanding of how to ski due to maybe some forms of, of atrophy in the brain as someone were to get older. What seems to have happened is that he was taking these wide radius turns down the mountain and hit her. That account was also corroborated by the ski instructor, too. He saw it happen, not the exact collision. He said he looked away at that moment when they collided, but saw Mr. Sanderson taking these wide turns. They were large radius turns, um, edge to edge. He was close to carpet to carpet using the entire run. If you make a small t turn, you're out of the line of traffic. They're taking those wide turns because it's a little bit of the apprehension to actually make another turn because turning is probably the more difficult part of skiing or snowboarding generally the hardest part for a beginner kind of making turns down a steep surface of the mountain right so what people end up doing is that they end up traversing the mountain more and taking very wide turns so they can limit the steep grade of the mountain because if you think about it if you're making very quick turns down the mountain and not taking very wide turns you are gaining a lot more speed and you have to do a lot more work because you're making so many extra turns. And if we're a beginner, turning is hard, so you're trying to limit the number of turns. Someone who's new, 
Okay. You need a lot more space. I remember being new and I remember trying to go on off hours. So I didn't bump into anybody because it was like, Oh my gosh, you know, I need as much space as possible here because I just don't have as much fine minute control over what I'm doing. So I need to make sure I have as much space as possible so I can make turns as widely as possible and not making very sharp turns because I didn't know how to make the very sharp turns on a snowboard. It's more than just no, it's it's really muscle memory. And you know what? That's just the reality of starting. You know, when you're starting, you just you're so bad. And the reason why is because it's so hard especially snowboarding. I think with skiing, you can at least stand up and do like French fries, pizza, French fries, pizza, your way down the mountain. (laughs) 